One or two days before the break-in, I dreamed that Luau had entrusted the master key to me. There was a lot of mist, and I approached four eyes' house safely, almost on tiptoe. Luau was lo on the lookout under a tree. We could hear the villagers shouting and singing revolutionary songs as they feasted nearby. The entrance to Four Eyes' house had a double door. Each side was hinged in two holes, one in the threshold, the other in the lintel, and they were secured in the middle with a chain and copper padlock. The lock was cold and beaded with moisture, and resisted my attempts to pick it for a long time. I turned the master key this way and that, and twisted it around with such force that I was afraid it would snap off in the keyhole. Finally, I grabbed hold of the left door and tried with all my life my to wrench it free from the lower pivot hole. I didn't succeed. At the last resort, I gave the master key set again, and suddenly, with a dry click, the power gave way. I pushed open the double doors. But hardly had I stepped inside when I froze in horror. There, perched on a chair behind the table, was Four Eyes' mother, calmly knitting. She smiled without speaking. I found myself blushing and my ears turning red hot like a teenager on his first romantic assassination. She didn't seem in the least alarmed. I stammered something about a message for her son to find out where he was. She went on smiling, but didn't reply. The knitting needles flew in her long, bony fingers, and I noticed she had liver spots on the backs of her hands. I was mesmerized by the clicking needles, twisting and turning at breakneck speed. In, round, through, off, to knit row upon row of stitches. I retraced my steps, slipped outside, shut the two halves of the door quietly behind me, and replaced the padlock. Although there was not a sound from the house, I turned and fled as my life depended on it. It was at that point I woke up from a start.